As a child, Vishwa walked a long way to get to school. As a college student, he tutored two children to make ends meet. And as an engineer, he built dams, bridges and institutions and the foundation for a modern India. Read this book to know how Sir M. Visveswaraya observed the world around him, learned from it, made bold decisions and never shied away from hard work. The title of the story, Sir M. Visveswaraya, The Builder of Dams, Bridges and a Nation. Written by Mala Kumar. Illustrated by Krupa Thakur Patil, Sachin Pandit and Sheshadri Mokshagundam. Photographs by Vishveshwaraya National Memorial Trust. The story is published by Pratham Books. Narrated by Asavari Doshi. For more such interesting stories, visit our website www.booksthatspeak.com. Let's begin with the story. The books fell down as Mangala reached for an old trunk. Amma came running. Ah, oh, my sir MV book, she said and picked it up. He autographed it for Muttaji, you see. Mangala sat next to her mother. Did you know your great-grandmother went to college only because of him? Amma asked. But wasn't Sir M. V. was an engineer? What did he have to do with Muttaji's education? Asked Mangala. Oh yes, he was an engineer and he built bridges and dams and buildings. But he also did so much more. You know what? Tomorrow, let's go to Muddenhalli, the place where he was born. In the small village of Muddenhalli, near present-day Bengaluru, is a house surrounded by rocky hills. Here, a baby boy was born on September 15, 1860. Next to his house is a small office that he built when he became an engineer. The office is now a museum. Each exhibit tells a story about this engineer, Sir Mokshagundam Visveshwaraya. Now, that's a really long name. So, people started referring to him as Sir M.V. His friends called him Vishwa. As a young boy, Vishwa had to walk a long way to school. Looking at his precariously frail build, a teacher is supposed to have remarked that he would not live long. But this did not worry young Vishwa or his family. All they wanted was for him to have a good education. When he was 15, Vishwa's father passed away. He continued his schooling in Chikkabalapura and Bengaluru and then studied arts in Central College. He barely had money. Luckily, a couple took him in. In return for board, lodging and a small sum of money, he tutored their two children. Vishwa graduated in 1881 and got a scholarship to study civil engineering at the College of Science in Pune. He topped the course. When Vishweshwaraya graduated from Central College, Bengaluru, Principal Charles Waters presented him with a dictionary. Vishweshwaraya used it for the next 80 years. A very thrifty person, he once said in a speech, If you buy what you do not need, you will need what you cannot buy. As the university topper, Vishweshwaraya was appointed assistant engineer in the public works department of the government of Bombay. Within months, he built a structure called a siphon to bring water from the Panjara river to a village called Datari. While there, he came to work from the camp office across Panjara River. How did he travel to work? On horseback, of course, since this was in 1884. One evening, it rained so hard that the river was flooded and Vishweshwaraya could not ride back to the traveller's bungalow. For two days, the villagers of Nandavan and Datari offered him food and accommodation. But on the third morning, he had to return to the camp office. What did he do? He just swam back with the help of his bill workers. Can you imagine how strong he had become 
contrary to that early prediction vishveshwaraya's public works which started then went on for over 7 decades vishveshwaraya was passionate about water conservation he designed many water supply drainage and irrigation systems across the country vishveshwaraya also designed or advised on water supply systems in eden that is now in yemen kolhapur indore gwalior bhopal nagpur goa rajkot bhavnagar baroda sangli and across bihar and odisha 1894 service in sindh designed a water filtration system on the river bed to supply clean water to sukur in sindh now in pakistan 1889 new irrigation system designed a system of irrigation for the bombay presidency that could distribute water to large blocks of land and increase the output of crops it was called the block system of irrigation 1908 drainage for hyderabad cyclonic rains caused the musi river to flood thousands of people were killed The Nizam of Hyderabad invited Vishveshwaraya to design a drainage and water supply system to prevent such losses. Automatics Louis Gates. The Khadakwasla reservoir, Pune's water source would overflow every monsoon, but the water that it could hold was not enough for the summer. Vishveshwaraya designed a system of automatic gates that increased the capacity of the reservoir which he patented as the automatic sluice gates similar systems were installed in Tigra dam near Gwalior and Krishnarat Sagar dam near Mysuru in 1909 after he finished his work as a consulting engineer in Hyderabad Vishveshwaraya received a telegram from the Diwan of Mysore offering him the post of chief engineer but Vishveshwaraya was no longer interested in routine work so he asked if he could work on developing industries and technical education in the state the government agreed Sri Krishna Raja Wadiyar 4 the maharaja of mysore asked him to design a dam across the river kaveri previously vishveshwaraya had visited large irrigation projects like the aswan dam in egypt he had observed how engineers there worked and came up with a design for the krishnarat sagar dam built over many years it is a spectacular construction and thousands of people still visit it every day In 1912 when KRS dam was built it supplied power to the Kolar gold fields it had a tunnel that was nearly 3 km long bored through a hill range it led to the cultivation of sugarcane giving rise to large sugar mills in the region it was the largest dam in india in 1912 the maharaja offered the post of diwan to vishveshwaraya but he was anxious to have opportunities to develop technical education and industries in the state and he did not want any high office however the maharaja insisted and vishveshwaraya became the diwan as someone who knew the worth of a good education vishveshwaraya wanted to set up schools and colleges during his period as diwan between 1912 and 1918 the number of educational institutions in the state went up from just 4568 to 11294 the maharani's college in mysuru became the first in the state to include degree courses for women vishveshwaraya was also responsible for starting technical education colleges engineering colleges and agriculture education he introduced compulsory education which is now a fundamental right in the indian constitution on a visit to his old school in muddanhalli he gave a packet of chocolates to the students when he was asked to give a speech sir mv spoke only for 5 minutes because he was not prepared unhappy with that he came back a few days later with a well prepared speech When he resigned as chairman of the Mysore Iron Works which he founded a large sum of money was due to him 
Vishweshwaraya wanted it to be used to start a college where boys could learn a profession. So the Shri Jaicham Rajendra Occupational Institute was set up in Bengaluru. It is now called Shri Jaicham Rajendra Polytechnic. The first Ganesha made at the Mysore Iron Works, later renamed Vishweshwaraya Iron and Steel Plant. Now the institutions that Sir M. V. helped to set up. Government Engineering College, renamed University Vishweshwaraya College of Engineering, Bengaluru. Hebbal Agricultural School that led to the formation of University of Agricultural Sciences. Shri Jai Cham Rajendra Polytechnic College, Bengaluru. Mysore University. By now, Visveshwaraya was recognized for his work as an engineer and a leader in many parts of the country. In 1915, while he was the Diwan of Mysore, the British government made him a Knight Commander of the Order of the Indian Empire, KCIE. From then on, he was called Sir M. Visveshwaraya. The visionary that he was, Vishweshwaraya visited factories and big construction projects in many countries, not only to provide them with his services, but also to see how he could bring development to India. He felt India's poverty could only be reduced if education and employment were available to everyone. He often boldly declared, industrialize or perish. But during the same time, Gandhiji used to say, industrialize and perish. Even though the two great men did not have the same views about industrialization, they respected each other. Vishweshwaraya was a very simple man. He focused almost all his energy and thoughts on nation building. He believed that all people should be respected for the work they did. During the Mysuru Dasara celebrations, British officers sat on chairs while Indian officers had to sit on the floor or remain standing at the back. Vishweshwaraya stopped going to these darbars because of the discrimination. The government noticed this and got chairs for the Indian officers too. Once when Vishweshwaraya was quite old, he wanted to go to his village. Chief Minister Kengal Hanumantaya said that he could take a government car. But as he was not going on official business, Vishweshwaraya refused. So the CM drove him in his personal car. Big buildings and structures cannot be built by a single person. Dreamers, researchers, funders, masons, laborers and many others have to work together to build them. Sir M. V. worked hard and efficiently, inspiring everyone around him to give their best too. Once when he was on a study tour in America, Vishweshwaraya's host said that the group had to climb a four-floor high ladder to see how a particular machine worked. Everyone was scared. Not Sir M.V. He climbed nimbly all the way to the top. He was just 85 years old. In his 90s, he was called upon by Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to examine several proposals for bridges to be built over the Ganga. He first did an aerial survey of the region. No one expected him to come to inspect the rocky and dangerous terrain. Since Sir M. V. never did anything without thorough study and preparation, of course he travelled to the region to make notes. Based on the location selected by him, a road come railway bridge was built near Mokama, Bihar. Sir M. V. was always eager to learn. When he was more than a hundred years old, a relative asked him what he wanted from Chennai. Get me a good modern dictionary, he replied. The dictionary is now in the Muddenhalli Museum. Sir M. V. helped to set up the Mysore Agricultural Residential School. It later became the University of Agricultural Sciences. The rock on which he liked to sit has been named after him. Among the books in his personal library were poems of Kabir, Arabian Nights, Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer Abroad, Charles Dickens' The Pickwick Papers, Dr. Peter Schmidt's Don't Be Tired, Macmillan's Promotion of Happiness and Rabindranath Tagore's Stray Birds. Also in the library were books that he wrote, Memoirs of My Working Life, Constructing India, 
nation building a five year plan for the provinces and prosperity through industry as an engineer and a person who valued education and discipline sir mv was an inspiration to millions of people among them was a boy called ramu who used to read out to him from the newspapers when vishveshwaraya's eyesight became weak he wanted ramu to come on time read to him and leave for school on time for this sir mv paid him 10 paise every day ramu's reading improved and he grew up to become a teacher after he retired he became a scout master in tumkuru and taught physical exercise memory games first aid and sports to children for free mangal and amma had been learning about vishveshwaraya for a week amma so muttaji could get a degree because sir mv introduced graduate studies in mysuru mangala asked amma nodded ajji had an account in mysuru bank founded by sir mv amma nodded you worked at the kannada sahitya parishad amma nodded again and now i want to visit vishveshwaraya industrial and technological museum which was set up in his memory said mangala yes let's go there next week on his birthday said amma September 15 is celebrated as National Engineers Day in honor of Sir Mukshagundam Vishveshwaraya an outstanding engineer and visionary Vishveshwaraya helped set up the Karnataka Sahitya Parishad later renamed Kannada Sahitya Parishad in Bengaluru to bring together people who spoke different dialects of the language Timeline of life events September 15 1860 Born to Venkat Lakshmamma and Srinivas Shastri in Mudanhalli, 1875, went to Bengaluru to pursue BA. 1883, graduated with a degree in civil engineering at the College of Science, Pune. 1884, started working at PWD Government of Bombay. 1909, appointed Chief Engineer, Mysuru. 1912, appointed the Diwan of Mysuru. 1915 became Sir M V when King George V of Britain made him a Knight Commander of the Order of the Indian Empire for his contributions to public good. 1955 honored with the Bharat Ratna for his contribution to engineering, education, and nation building. April 14, 1962, he passed away five months short of his 102nd birthday. www.books.speak.com Eruawi Eruawi Eruawi